Title, Nearly Spilled Tea, written by Descending Dreams. The sakura pearls float gently in the wind as you make your way through Inazuma City, where Takoyaki's stall had been running low on several key supplies, so he decided to take a day off since it had been a while since your last. You'd just purchased the flour and the soy sauce, and you figured you had a little more time before you needed to go back to ingredient shopping. A happy couple walks by you, hands intertwined with their laughter, filling the air. You smile wistfully as you watch them walk by, your hand subconsciously running over the part of your arm where your soulmate's words were, Yes, I suppose you could say that. And you didn't consider yourself to be particularly lonely, but you often imagine how nice it would be to have a significant other whenever a happy couple or two passed by. Now that you own your own business and your personal life is fairly stable, you can't help but wonder if the fated encounter with your soulmate is right around the corner or still in the fairly distant future. You snap yourself out of your thoughts, trying your best not to dwell on when you meet your soulmate. Your goal right now is to head over to Tomoki's food stall to try some of his famous dango milk, which you've heard way reviews about. You wouldn't consider him your direct competition since you both sell completely different kinds of food, but it also can't hurt to try some of his. As you draw closer to the stall, you notice there's a blue-haired young man exchanging words with Tomoki, and there's a few people standing nearby looking at him as well. You furrow your eyebrows as you walk, trying to understand what the fuss is, but once you're close enough, you recognize the blue-haired young man. He is the head of the Yashiro Commission. No wonder people were staring. When you are close enough to Tomaki's stall, you make sure to stand way behind the commissioner so it doesn't seem like you're intruding on his face. Even though his back is to you and he probably doesn't even know you were there, you figure it's better to be safe than sorry. Tomaki glances at you for a second to acknowledge your presence while still talking to the commissioner and you nod in response. You can't wait until he's done. It's no skin off your back. Unfortunately for you, it seems you gave the young commissioner a little too much space. Because only moments later, you hear a young child's playful yell only for them to nearly sprint into you, throwing you off balance. As the child runs off into the distance with their friends, you tumble face first into Kansa to Ayato's back. Ayato lets out a surprised gasp when he feels you make contact. You reflexively grab onto his shoulder to make sure you don't fall farther down and to stabilize him from the impact. Once you've regained your balance, you keep your hands on him for not one moment as the gravity of the situation hits you. Ayato turns around to get a look at you, but is instead only greeted by your remorse. Lord Gamisato, I am so sorry, you bow deeply apologetic. It was an accident, I swear. You say, even though you know it wasn't your fault and some random kid had choked you into him unintentionally. You miss the sight of the exasperated grimace in his face turning into recognition and pump his pitiful gaze. Please excuse me for my transgression. I'll get going right now, so… As you turn to make a hasty retreat from this embarrassing scene, you feel a gloved hand make contact with your wrist, his gloved hand. You look back to see him looking… shocked, amazed. Uh, Lord Kamisato? Oh, was it something I said? You were barely keeping yourself from trembling due to the tension of the situation. Every one of your muscles feels like it's been pulled taut. A small crowd has begun to form, which doesn't help the stress you are currently under. You can usually handle crowds just fine at your stall, but those times, their eyes weren't all on you at once. At last, the young lord speaks. Yes, I suppose you could say that. It takes but a moment for you to recognize those words. They are the very same words that are on your arm. Forget your soulmate being Lord Kansato. Of all the possible situations, why did you have to meet him like this? Fucking literally bumping into him. A tom of his strings told when you were trying to enjoy the extra time you had on your day off. Thankfully, somehow, you were still able to form somewhat coherent thoughts. You would ask him if the two of you should go talk somewhere else, but that's just bound to start rumors. Perceptive people might even realize that you were the young lord's soulmate if you didn't phrase your next sentence carefully. Is there something you need from me, Lord Kamisata? You question him, testing the waters. You quickly gesture to the left with your eyes, hoping he gets the message that you can, well, need to, talk to him somewhere else. To your relief, he does. 
Why, yes, there is. He improvises without hesitation. Could you please escort me to Komore Tea House? I believe there's some paperwork I need to pick up there. He plays it off like you were his retainer, which you think is probably the best course of action and will keep the rumors to a minimum. Of course, my lord. You play into him perfectly. Nodding your head in acknowledgement, you silently thank the gods that you remember where the tea house is, and the young lord seems amused you went along with him so quickly. Your muscles still feel tight from anxiety, but you manage to guide yourself and Ayato away from the small crowd. You walk in front of him as he stays a few steps behind you to your side. That was the most impressive performance, he offers, seemingly not caring that you both are still in public. Are you a trained in the art of improvisational theater? No, just naturally good at acting, I guess. You shrug. You resist the urge to look back at him in order to reinforce the act you are putting up. The whole situation still kind of has you on edge, which he doesn't notice. Or he does, and just isn't saying anything. You certainly could have fooled me. You don't need to see his expression to know he's being sportive. You nod in acknowledgement, but remain silent the rest of the walk. You don't know if you like the fact that just being near him is making your heart beat faster. When you arrive at Comrade P House, you move to the side to let Ayato walk in front of you. He nods to you in acknowledgement, seeming pleased that you intuitively know to let him speak to the shop assistant outside first. Kozue, good afternoon. Have you been well? Okay, so this lady's name is Kozue. You should probably remember that for later. Yes, Lord Gamsato. Thank you for asking. The black-haired woman bows slightly. Are you here for business? Or she pauses when she notices you. Pleasure. She seems wary of you because she's never seen you with Ayato before. Hmm. I'd say a little of both. He smiles coyly and turns to you. Kazue? This is... Goodness, I've never asked for your name, did I? His expression falls a bit. How embarrassing of me to forget to ask my soulmate their name. Kazue's face turned shocked, eyes almost popping out of her head. Guess she won't be suspicious of you anymore. You tell them your name, and Nayato repeats it himself. What a lovely name. His smile seems more earnest than Koi this time. Kozue, would you mind adding them to the patron list? Of course, my lord. I'll do it right away. Please head in. The woman just drew to the door with her hand, and the young lord nods in acknowledgement. You can sense the woman's eyes on the back of your head as you walk in with Ayato. When you walk in, the first thing that catches your eye is the dog sitting behind the counter. If you recall correctly, his name is Torumaru. You've heard a few people mention the tea house managing dog before, and in a pleasant surprise, you spot a familiar face behind the counter as well. Toma. He visits your stall ever so often, and he was nothing but nice to you whenever he did. My lord, good afternoon. I didn't expect you to be here so soon. Toma greets Ayato cheerfully, and I see you brought someone along with you. It takes less than a second for Toma to recognize you. He greets you by name. What are you doing here? I would think you'd be working by now. I took a day off to buy ingredients and double check when I need more. Well, you did. But now it seems you weren't going to have time for it. It's good to see you, Toma. He smiled warmly at the young man. Well, it seems you two are already acquainted, Ayato comments. I suppose that makes things easier. What do you mean, my lord? Toma fires his brow, and Torumaru cocks his head to the side. Are they helping you with something? Not quite, or not yet, at least. We just discovered we're soulmates. The young lord says calmly before putting his hand on your shoulder, which your eyes instinctively go to look at. How fortunate is that? Ayato adds mirthfully. Why is he touching you so casually when you've only just met? Wouldn't a man who was the head of one of the most prominent clan in Inazuma be more formal? You are soulmates, you suppose? But it's still kind of odd. You don't notice his eyes on your face, intently gauging your reaction to his gesture. Thoma looks surprised, but he congratulates you nonetheless. That's wonderful, my lord. And for you too, of course. Thoma beams while Torumaru barks once and wags his tail. You suppose that's his way of saying the same? Should I prepare something to celebrate? There's no need to right now, but maybe later. Ayato politely turned down his offer. Though, would you mind preparing some tea for my guests and I? He glances back at you out of the corner of his eye. 
which makes you cast your eyes away from him. You know it's not polite to stare, but the commissioner is so handsome it's difficult to resist. Of course, no problem, the blonde nods. Oh, and the room on the left is empty if you want to use it. He gestures to the room with his hand and starts getting to work making the tea. Wonderful, I had to nod to Toma. At last, we'll have the chance to speak privately. Shall we head in? He turns his gaze back to you waiting for your nod of approval before making his way over to the room as you follow closely behind. As you walk in, you admire the pretty decoration the room has. From the patterned partitions to the subtle accents on the wall, you make sure not to stand around for too long before sitting across from Ayato. This detailing is so beautiful. You run your fingers across the little engravings and intricacies on the edge of the table. I can imagine how long it takes to make something like this. Most observant of you to notice, the young lord offers. Would you say you were a detail-oriented person? <laughs> More like detail-obsessed, you admit. I don't let a single uneven takoyaki bowl meet my customer's eyes, much less burnt. I had a laughs. Ah, so that's how Toma knows you. His amused smile stirs the butterflies in your stomach a bit. He did mention having the most perfectly arranged and delicious takoyaki once a while back. I believe, was that you? I hope so. I'm happy to hear you liked it. You fluster a bit at his indirect compliment. I hope you'll try some too, sometime. But of course, he nods. I definitely won't miss it the next time you're open while I have a moment to spare. You nod in acknowledgement. That reminds you. You should probably get down to business discussing how your relationship is going to work. Ayato is doubtless a very busy man. So it will take some time for you to get to know each other before pursuing a romantic relationship. Well, that is if you both decide you want to go that route. Since he's a political figure, it wouldn't surprise if he ended up deciding to marry someone else for appearances. Though if you did end up having romantic feelings for him, you know you'd likely be sad at the prospect of him marrying someone else. Is there something in your mind? He questions, and it brings you out of your thoughts. Well, I was thinking about how we should go about getting to know each other since we know we're soulmates now and though. You bring your hand to your chin. I'm pretty busy with my stall most days, especially in the afternoons and evening. And I'd imagine you're probably busy then too? That leaves the morning then, no? Ayato puts his hand out in suggestion. I try not to have anything scheduled then. I find my mind sharper after I've had about a training on the beach in the morning. I think a walk with you once in a while could serve much the same purpose. Hmm, seems he's already taken a liking to you if he doesn't mind adjusting his schedule to spend time with you. Thoma announces his entrance and gently places cups of tea in front of you both. For a moment, you wonder if he's going to stay but he makes his way back to the door once you have your tea. Please let me know if you need anything else. Thoma bows and graces the two of you with a kind smile before heading back out. You can't help but smile warmly at the young man in return. You turn back to Ayato to pick up the tea to make a sip. You absolutely do not anticipate the words that come out of Ayato's mouth once the pirate user has left. You wouldn't happen to like Thoma, by any chance, would you? He tucks your name to the end of his seemingly casual question. You on the other hand almost choke on your tea. A little dripping down your chin from barely preventing yourself from doing a spit take. You squeeze your eyes shut and force yourself to swallow before speaking. <clears throat> um, forgive me, Lord Kamisato, but what in the world gave you that impression? You open your eyes to look at the young lord who seems absolutely tickled by your intense expression. Hmm, you were getting the feeling that this guy has a penchant for eliciting reactions from people. You don't know if this body is well for you in the long run. I apologize. The question was a bit out of line. I just couldn't help but notice the way he smiled at him. What is he talking about? It was definitely not a love-struck smile that you just gave Toma. Also, you were free to call me Ayato in private, should you wish to do so. You definitely don't have any problems with using his given name. I don't know what you interpreted it as, but no. I do not have feelings for Toma. He's an acquaintance at best. You let out a small breath of air. Um, his smile is infectious though. The young lord laughs. That I can't deny. Toma's loyalty and positive attitude are among his best qualities. 
Ayato nods to himself, taking a sip of his tea. It's a relief that he won't be an adversary. Did he... Did he just insinuate that he'd compete with Tomo for your affection? Unless he has something to say about it, Lord, uh, I mean, Ayato. His eyes break up with mirth. Then there's nothing you need to worry about it. I haven't had my eye on anyone either. Wonderful. Then there's nothing stands in the way of true love. Now, you were a hundred percent sure he's just trying to get a rise out of you. His satisfied smile and his eyes narrowed in amusement say it all when you tense up from his directness. He's damn good at hiding it, that's for sure, but you just know that he's enjoying this. You look at him incredulously, your hand unconsciously moving to grip your leg. Perhaps because you were soulmates, you can sense his feelings well. So you decide to be bold. Lord Kamisata, you wouldn't happen to be intentionally trying to fluster me by being forward, would you? He used his formal title for added effect and casually take a sip of your tea. The upstanding Yashiro Commissioner would never do something like that, surely? Now the moment of truth was upon you. Would he grit angry at your barb or would he take it in stride? His suppressed expression lasts for only a moment before morphing into a downright devilish smirk. Oh yes, he definitely liked that. Well, seems I've been caught, he says without a shred of remorse. I ought to congratulate you for being one of the very few to pick up on that, much less have the courage to say something about it. He chuckles quietly for a moment. Now, I simply must know if my words are on your arm. You nod in response. Guess this means he wants to make sure you are soulmates? Well, you simply pull up your sleeves to reveal your words. Ayato stands up briskly and begins to unfasten his white outer robe. Um, I, I don't need to see yours right now if it's too difficult for you to show. You silently pray no one walks in on you to get the wrong idea of what's transpiring. Nonsense, it's just the outer one that I need to take off. I'll put it back on momentarily. He waves away your concern. He shrugs the extravagant outer robe of his shoulder, folding it in half once and putting it to the side. His purple robe and black waistcoat now the outermost. He takes off his left forearm guard and puts it to the side as well. At last, he pulls off his left sleeve just enough for you to see the words on his pale skin. Sure enough, Lord Kamisato, I am so sorry it was an accident, I swear, is written on his arm. You can't help but let out an embarrassing groan burying your face in your hands. Ayato, of course, laughs in response. Not only am I sorry that I bumped into you earlier, I am sorry you have to say those words on your arm for the rest of your life. You grumbled into your hands. Well, we wouldn't have met if you didn't trip and almost fall into me though, he suggests. You lift your head up on your hands and look at him. Less trip and fall, a more shove by some random kid. You realize you didn't let him see your arm yet. Oh, here. You present your arm to him and he seems to read over the words thoughtfully. He nods and leans back from your arm, satisfied. Exactly as expected, he comments, putting his forearm guard back on. But it's better to have checked sooner rather than later, only to find out we're ruined soulmates. You nod and pull your sleeve back down. You notice how lit but sturdy the young lord's figure is without his regal outer robe. The facade of elegance that hides a finely honed blade in plain sight, ready to be drawn at a moment's notice, the longer you spend talking to Ayato. The more you think that there's so, so much more going on in his head than people think, and the more you want to know what is going through that head of his. Is there something else on your mind? His voice brings you out of your thoughts and you realize you've been staring. You groan internally. How many more times are you going to embarrass yourself in front of him today? Not particularly. You sigh and take another sip of your tea, idly tracing the rim of the cup with your finger. Just thinking about how this will end up playing out, Ayato's expression becomes more serious. You make it sound like we're destined for tragedy. Do you think we're not compatible? He's surprised at how much his own words dismay him. A subtle sinking feeling settling in his stomach. No, it's not that, he reply. It's just... Your gaze meets his eyes. Can I be frank? Go ahead. It's better that we keep our communication clear from the start than to hold back. It's only likely to cause problems in the future. He responds without hesitation. You are impressed by his foresight. Well, 
what people approve of the Yashiro Commissioner being romantically involved with someone not from a higher ranking clan, he blinks owlishly at you. You misinterpret his silence for offense. Of course, he doesn't want to be with a commoner. I, I mean, um, if if the word got out about our status, people might assume you were romantically involved with me. Ayato closes his eyes and takes a sip of his tea before responding. I assure you that I care very little for the trivial opinions of people who don't know me on a personal basis. He looks at you sternly in the eye. Looks like you did offend him, but not for the reason you thought. Whatever our relationship turns out to be like, you can rest assured that our status as soulmates grants you protection by the Yashara Commission to the fullest extent. Whether you want to make our status public or not, that is up to you. I will warn you that making our status public may, may make you, he pauses, seemingly troubled to say the next words. A target, to put it bluntly. Kidnapping and attempts at your life would not be off the table, unfortunately. You worry your lip and gaze to the side. Does he deal with the latter on a regular basis? Would you be dealing with it often too? You can't help but wonder. He nonchalantly gazes into his tea as if it will provide him with life's secrets. If you choose to not openly affiliate yourself with me or the Yashara Commission, I won't blame you. Your life will certainly be much more peaceful that way. You make it sound like I have already made my choice. He looks back up at you, subtly surprised. I'll consider it, but I'm not one to back down in the face of adversity. With the time I've spent getting over my past struggles, I'd never turned away a friend who's helped me, even if, sometimes, my life becomes a little harder because of it. Your tenacity is most admirable, he says your name again, and the subtle fondness of his tone stirs a warm feeling in you. However, he continues, should we choose to go down the route of marriage, you wouldn't have much of a choice. Archons, he's giving you that coy smile again. You feel blood rush to your cheeks despite the fact you know he's toying with you once more. Half of you doesn't want to give him the satisfaction of getting a reaction from you, but the other half doesn't give a shit. The two sides tie so you're just not in agreement. You're right. I wouldn't have a choice. It'd be kind of hard to keep the wedding of major public official on the down low. The young lord chuckles. I'd say it's next to impossible. I can already see it. If you think a public official's regular wedding would spark gossip, just imagine what would happen if they were to elope. One can only imagine the chaos that will ensue. And all the heartbroken young people finding out he's officially off the market. You jest? Yes, and that. He sighs exasperatedly. You would not believe the amount of engagement letters I get on a regular basis. Some people just won't take no for an answer. You were slightly surprised at his honesty, but happy he seems comfortable with you. Were I more bold, I'd say we should get engaged tomorrow so you never have to see a single one of those letters ever again. You try your best to keep a straight face, but you crack a smile. Only to spare you the time of having to respond to them, of course. Hmm, that offer is a little more tempting than you realize. I've been receiving these kind of letters for nearly a decade. I don't know how much longer I can put up with them. His eyes flit up and down your form. Hopefully, they'll stop soon. That's all one can hope for now. You respond coolly and take another sip of tea. It's lukewarm by this point, but it's still pretty good so you don't mind. Ayato glances the ray of light shining through the window. Is it that late already? He questions, seemingly disappointed. He turns his gaze back to you. I am terribly sorry, but there is a meeting I must attend too soon. He stands to put his white robe back on. It's mostly just bickering between other clan heads, but customs stipulate that I must attend anyways. He fastens his shoulder guard back over his robe and from how fast he does it, you can tell he's done it a hundred times. That's alright, I understand. Time waits for no one after all. You rise from your seat and smile warmly at the young man. It was nice talking to you. Hopefully, we'll have the chance to talk again soon. The feeling is mutual. He returns your smile. I've enjoyed your company so far and would like to get to know you more intimately. Would you be interested in meeting me by the beach, south of Chinju Forest on Sunday morning? 
I would love that. You nod. He puts his hand on for you to shake, and you firmly put your hand in. Oh, he doesn't shake your hand. No. He brings your hand up to his lips and places a kiss on the back of it. You fluster immediately, your eyes wide and jaw almost on the floor. I, um, I thought, you stutter, that I was going to shake your hand. You nod, and you want to affectionately wipe off the self-satisfied smile that comes over his face. I'd suggest you start to expect the unexpected. You sigh and give Ayato a relaxed smile. With him around, you don't think there will be a single dull moment in life.